Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path. Last time we left off, we were doing our investigation, and we seem to have found the assassin because uh, Kay took more photos, and there was somebody wearing a red raincoat, or like a red hooded raincoat, whatever. And we found that, and it seems like the left arm of the assassin might be injured because we found a blood stain. So, let's see if the uh, gumshoe found him or not. Mr. Edgeworth, we found a suspicious person in that condition, sir. That's gotta be the assassin. Okay, we haven't proven that this person is the assassin just yet. For now, this is just a person of interest. Don't jump to conclusions. Got it! I'll control myself. There's no doubt that this is the guy who targeted the president, sir. It takes a daring person to target someone's life in front of an audience. Detective, bring him here. Courteously. Yes, sir! Hey, you guys! Bring him here! Oop, I kind of burped there. Oh, is that who I... Oh my god. Look who it is, guys. We haven't seen this person in a long time. He's not carrying an umbrella, and his left arm is bandaged. You there! State your name! My name is John Doe. John Doe. That's an unusual name. That is correct. This man... Have I seen him somewhere before? Prosecutor Edgeworth, you know my name? Yes, I have been observing your investigation. May I ask why you have called me here? We are searching for the assassin who attempted to murder the president. Do you recognize this red raincoat? I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I do not. I believe that this raincoat belongs to the assassin. Oh my, that is terrible indeed. This person should also have a severe injury on his left side of, his, of their body. Precisely like yours. I have no relation to this. A stare down! Mono mono! It's like there are firing laser beams out of their eyes! So, what happens next? Obviously, a confrontation, pal! A battle of wits between two gentlemen! Should I hear his explanation? I. I personally do not see the reason why we wouldn't want to hear it. Why the hell not? A witness might lie or misunderstand. If you find a contradiction in their statement, you present evidence, pal. Press the R button to look at the orga organizer and the X button to present. And if you don't find a contradiction, what do you do then? At those times, you press the witness for more details. To press, press the L button. Alright, sir, could you give us a demonstration, please? Go, Mr. Prosecutor, you are America's best. She just won't quit. All right. This may or may not go well. I understand that the person in the raincoat is suspicious. However, that does not mean that he was injured. I don't suppose you have proof. Clearly, my left arm is injured, but I can still use my right arm. When, it, when it's raining, I use an umbrella. I have no need for a raincoat. It didn't wear. You didn't wear a raincoat. That's your claim. Yes, not everyone uses a raincoat for protection against the rain. I am an umbrella person, after all. I'm definitely a raincoat person. Umbrellas will hinder hinder your movement. Well, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty parka. This wasn't this this wasn't what I wanted to talk about. I hope you understand. I am not the assassin. Unfortunately, leaving a testimony unexamined goes against my principles. How troublesome. I am but a simple ice cream salesman. Oops. Please excuse me. In the panic earlier, my wound seems to have reop reopened. Ew. There's no mistaking that the owner of this raincoat is the assassin. Furthermore, the owner of an injured left arm. Mr. Doe, I shall reveal your true color for all to see. Alright, let's do our rebuttal now. I think I know what to do. Um, he says you have proof regarding that the person was injured. Well, yes, how about the actual raincoat itself? It has a blood stain right here, so... Take that. So far it's easy, but I know this is going to get super damn difficult later on. I'm going to be an idiot. Mr. Doe, you seem like a very cautious person. However, today seems to be a different... seems to be different, because you left this behind. You must be mistaken. 
that does not belong to me. Or perhaps you have evidence that proves otherwise? Mr. Doe, is your injury alright? That wound seems to have opened. Ew, 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 ew. Indeed, it is, it is quite troublesome. Yes, I'm sure it is. You have my deepest sympathies. After all, you would have escaped. You would have escaped had your wounds not opened up. What do you mean? There's no mistaking that the one who wore this raincoat was injured, and I can prove that person was you. With this. Oh, it looks like yeah, he's nervous because his ice cream is melting. Okay. On the inside of this raincoat, there is a small blood stain. It's the blood of the assassin. Oh. Oh, okay. Came down fine. Attacking the president is a serious crime, pal. You'll cause an international incident. No matter how long you keep silent, your true nature will soon come to light. A blood test will settle this. The blood from the raincoat and the blood from your bandaged arm. I have all the evidence I need. Why don't you just admit it? You're the assassin who attacked the president. I am not the assassin. You don't know when, when to give up. If this was a game of chess, you would have been a checkmate a long time ago. Admit your defeat gracefully. He seems to be completely unfazed. I suppose I have no choice. I'll admit it. Indeed, the raincoat is mine. He confessed, sir! Arrest him! Arrest him! However, that does not mean I shot the president. What's that, pal? Prosecutor Edgeworth, all you have proven is that I wore this raincoat. What sort of crime is that? Oh, crap. Knew it was going to be that easy. I am no assassin. I'm just a simple ice cream salesman. All I did was put on that red raincoat and listen to the president's speech. It surprised me to see the bodyguards take action just before the gunshot rang out. Everyone in the audience immediately tried to escape, creating a state of panic. Are you satisfied this time? His story is getting fishier by the minute. He's really suspicious. Glaring at me won't help. You've, we've got evidence. Here, look at the guy in the red raincoat. That, that's got to be the assassin. I see. That is certainly not me. What? Prosecutor Edgeworth, please consider this very carefully. Was I really the one who wore a red raincoat? Whether he was or not, that person in the photo can only be Mr. Doe. But why? This man's self-confidence and in intens intensity. Hmm. Seems like he, you know, he does this for a living. Uh. Oh. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, I don't know who that one is. If support, they'll leave a text. Um, uh, they'll leave a message. Now. There is something I kind of wanted to go over. I put on a red camera and listen to the president's speech. It surprised me to see the bodyguards take action just before the gunshots rang out. That's why I want to press on right there, because that seems like a good, good amount of information. So the bodyguards reacted before the gunshot went off? Stop ringing, damn it. Yes, the bodyguards moved first. The one on the left side of the stage, in particular. You saw it all quite clearly. I have good eyesight. Names are written on the upper left of the security plan. The bodyguard on the left side would be... Mr. Rook? That is correct. A uh, Mr. Ethan Rook, I believe. Perhaps he noticed the light from the laser pointer. That man is no ordinary individual. From their actions, I don't believe that the bodyguards were amateurs. This man isn't an ordinary individual either. Please add that statement to your testimony. As you wish. The man on the left side of the stage was exceptionally quick. A Mr. Ethan Rook, I recall. Let's press on that just real quick. I want to see if I can get anything out of that. So the bodyguard on the left was faster. He reacted in just an instant. His response time was superb. I believe his name was Ethan Rook. I see. He had plenty of time to react. I want. Okay, I gotta take a look at that stuff real quick. Um, not necessarily. His expression never changes. Uh, I don't want to try to escape. Trying to stay panic. No. 
Okay, now let me just take a look at something here. Here we go. Let's see, pay extra attention to the lake area. A rook, uh, rook takes Knightley's place. In the case of mercy, Knightley will lead the president inside the plane. A terrace in the audience? We can't be certain there is none. Hmm. I'm afraid of presenting it on here because I'm not really sure if it means anything. Actually, what happened to the words? Okay, you know what? Or maybe it's the photos? See, this is what kind of bothers me is like, looking at the photo, one of them has a freaking neck brace on, and I'm, or I'm assuming that's Knightley, but you see Rook, his hand isn't really. Wait a minute. I think this is actually what he means by saying he's faster. You see, the guy on the right already has, he's reaching for his gun. But it seems like Rook isn't. I think I just got this. I, I, I... Please tell me, got your statement just now. It contradicts this piece of evidence. Is that so? Do you need glasses? No, I do not. Is that so? Do you need hearing, hearing aids? Damn it all. Ah, there's no contradiction. I should t take another look at the evidence while I listen to his testimony. Ah, uh, it was exceptionally quick, but my thing proved it wrong. If he's quick, then Objection! okay. It was a security plan. Okay, I was I was gonna go with that first bite. I I ugh, this is what sucks when I play this game for the first time. I think too differently. It seems you aren't just a simple ice cream salesman after all. You think too highly of me, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Why would a simple ice cream salesman know the name of the president's bodyguard? Well, there also there was that also, but I don't know why I didn't think about that. The name of the bodyguard? Surely you just. Didn't you say their names just a moment ago? Mr. Knightley and Mr. Rook. Correct? I don't think you did. This is a diagram of security plans. We learnt their names from this. However, please look. Only their surnames are written here. Oh. You distinctly said Ethan Rook. How did you know his full name when you we did when, when we did not? Oh, that's pretty weird, sir, sir. Why do you know his name? Explain yourself. Uh, that was merely a slip of the tongue. It's true. This guy is the assassin. Young lady, where you're being a little hasty. The reason I knew his name was quite simple. What? I'm an acquaintance of Mr. Rooks. What? He and I have a bit of a connection. His is a name that I will never forget. Mr. Edgeworth, he's just telling a big fat lie. This is not a lie. I'm just a simple ice cream salesman. And an acquaintance of Ethan Rooks. In that case, let's just ask Rook himself about this. Whether or not he's the one uh, in, or he's the one on the... Blah, blah, blah. Whether or not he's one of this uh, dubious ice cream salesman's acquaintances. As you wish. However, that may prove difficult now. He is currently busy with the president's security, after all. Besides, even if I am not an acquaintance of Mr. Rooks, does that prove that I fired a gun? If you aren't the assassin, then why'd you remove your raincoat? It was a little hot, and the rain had stopped. I wanted to air out the wound. Is there a problem with that? Why'd you hide it, then? Ugh, I just can't seem to corner him. What, is, is the jury here? Uh, or the, the court, uh, the audience? Yeah, well, well yeah, whatever. Mr. Sergio, what are you doing? Hurry up and arrest him! That man's so suspicious, I I'd even arrest him myself! Arrest him without evidence? How could I do such a thing? Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do something? Breaking news, the criminal is on the verge of escaping the prosecutor. Oh no, what do I do? Oh dear, they're already treating me like a criminal. I understand. Since, I'm, since I've been suspected this far, uh, it seems I will have to tell the truth. The truth? What is he up to? I saw another person wearing a red hood. Oh crap. What? 
What? Surely that was the person who was in a photo. I thought I first noticed him right before the speech, uh, right before their speech when it was still raining. He caught my eye because his raincoat was the same color as mine. In his hand, I saw a laser pointer of the, of the light aimed directly at the president. It can't be. There was another person wearing a red hood. I knew that if I wore the red raincoat, I'd be mistaken for the assassin. That is why I took off the raincoat. Raincoat. You saw an assassin wearing the same color hood as yours. Hmm. Wouldn't that be a nice coincidence? That's what I expected you to, you would say, which is why I did not testify as such. Prosecutors and the police are a suspicious lot. I knew that nobody would believe me. At the moment of the incident, the assassin was very close to the prosecutor. Prosecutor. I only arrived after the incident. Not you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. That prosecutor over there. Huh? Me? Yes, you should be visible in that photo. Uh, oh, uh, I do. Okay. Here, right in front of the person in the red hood. That's me, all right. What's your point? What's this man? What's this man driving at? I have been observing your investigation this entire time, Prosecutor Edgeworth. And I have noticed something strange. Something strange? Hmm. It seems you still haven't noticed this contradiction yet. A contradiction? In this photo, the people who can be seen are the Chief, Mr. Payne, and the Assassin. I don't see any, anything strange. Please think back carefully about the circumstances during the President's speech. I believe you're holding the evidence that contradicts this photo. Do I have evidence that contradicts this photo? Actually, I think I do now because... Didn't... Well, um, Nicole say that she was saying right behind two people talking about something, and Edward kept saying, where do I where do I remember that voice? Maybe, just maybe, that voice was the chief prosecutor in pain. Am I right? It can't be! There's a contradiction between a photo and a tape! It seems you've noticed. Mr. Edgeworth, what's going on? There's a person missing from this photo photograph. Huh? Well, who is it? Yes, it's rather strange. Someone who should be there, but isn't. The person who should be in this photo is... Well... Should be Nicole. This is easy enough because there's like no one here. Huh? Miss Swift? Why would you say that? Mr. Payne's voice was recorded on Miss Swift's tape. He was whispering quietly when it, with the chief prosecutor. Yep, there those are from the folks standing in front of me. Two older men. All right, yeah. It seems Miss Swift was near Miss uh, Mr. Payne when she recorded a speech. Ah, but she isn't anywhere in the photo. That is correct. Now, Mr. Prosecutor. Who is the one you should be pursuing? Ugh. Nicole Swift, would you mind giving us your testimony? Come on, it feels weird when you talk all formal like that. It's fine, I ain't got nothing to hide. Okay. It ain't, it ain't like I stayed in one spot while I was recording. I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. I reckon this picture must have must have been sent at a different time uh, to my tape recording. So quit making that scary face. It ain't what you think. The Swiss tape recorded a conversation between my colleagues, Mr. Payne and Chief Prosecutor. Why would Nicole be lying? That would mean. I mean, Nicole's the assassin, pal. You gotta be kidding me! I ain't done nothing like that. Be that as it may, however, there is a contradiction in your testimony. Huh? I don't reckon so, no sir. It appears I must reveal this contradiction with evidence. Oh crap, alright. Let's see here. Hey, like I say in one spot when I was recording, I was moving around the audience, shuffling here and there. I reckon this picture must have been snapped at a different time than my tape recording. Quit making that scary face, and what you think. 
something tells me it's this one. Nope! Nicole seems rather aloof from all this. Still, she does- she's- uh, she just doesn't seem like the kind of person to tell harmful lies. I agree she doesn't seem like a person with ill intent, but... If that's the case, there must be something even worse troubling her. In any case, Miss Swift's movement have been- have been recorded on that tape. Surely I have evidence that shreds some light on this. That's what I was gonna do, is like, maybe looking at the tape or hearing the tape. So I'm thinking this might- it might be a statement here, saying uh, the picture might have been sent at a different time. However, let's look at the tape recording real quick. Uh, let's see, it's fine. Uh, damn it. Benji, you're like, lying down on my- there. Okay. He's lying down on my headphone cord and my microphone cord, it's like pulling me down with him. Uh, I don't know why he's sleeping right underneath me, like, in front of, right underneath the rolling chair and everything. Let's see, according to the schedule, there's a meeting after this? Uh, you seem quite pleased that the other guy seems to have been resolved. Bang, bang. So, I think this might- could be a piece of evidence right here, because... This is a, right there, you know, right after that, boom! It happened, so it makes me wonder that... She should be right here, so... In any case, guys, I guess I'm just going to be saving this for the next episode because, you know, video, videos going on for a little while. And hopefully I'm correct. If not, then I'll continue looking like an idiot. But it was bound to happen. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Path. I'll see you guys later.